found the problem. Look at this. This time on Vehicle Garage, I'm doing an update on my 1994 first generation S10 Blazer. If you've been following the channel, you might remember that I drug this S10 Blazer home back in the spring of 2017. And the last time that I did a video on this was actually in 2020, so it's been quite a while. I started out making this video over a year ago in the spring of 2022. It is now May of 2023. And everything that you see in part one of this video is the five-year update I made for the S10 Blazer. Now that it's actually been six years since I drug the car home, part two is going to be the six-year update. So this is a five slash six-year update on the S10 Blazer. So the first thing I need to do here is get in here and check the brakes. So I need to pull this forward, jack it up, take the tires off and inspect, see what the brakes look like. Since as of right now, they're making horrible, horrible sounds when I hit the pedal. So it still stops okay, but it's making horrible noise. So definitely need to get that checked out before it gets any worse and or before the brakes stop working entirely. Well, the last time you guys saw the S10 Blazer was two years ago, uh, back when I put the new muffler on and did a few other improvements to try to coax a little bit more fuel mileage out of it. Unfortunately, even though it's been two years, I still haven't done any longer trips to really see if I made any improvement to the highway mileage. And the in-town mileage, I haven't seen any kind of significant improvement. Um, that that could also be partially to blame because the transmission most of the time leaves from a stop in second gear. So one of the other things that I want to do in this video is try to fix that. I think I have a good idea of what it is. I think it has to do with the 2-4 band servo, which is on the outside of the transmission. I think when I put the long pin in there and when I shimmed it, it's putting too much pressure on the band, causing it to not release and set off in second gear most of the time. So we'll pop that open here in a little bit and pull the shim out of there and see if that does anything. The other thing I did about the time of the last video two years ago was to upgrade or the idea was to upgrade. I replaced the standard mechanical cooling fan with two 12 inch 80 watt electric cooling fans. And those have done okay. Overall, I haven't been too happy with those fans. Um, in the summer here with the AC on, they really don't keep up. If I'm sitting in traffic, it does start to overheat. So a lot of times I'll have to turn the AC off and that's not really fun. So at some point here, I, I'm gonna upgrade to some stronger, bigger, better fans of some kind. I haven't really decided yet. That'll probably be another video because it's not really affecting the drivability for me right now. One of the other things that I've wanted to tackle on this for quite some time, but I've never gotten around to it, is pulling the roof rack off the top and sanding that down and repainting it because it is peeling. And, and that roof rack is one of the biggest eyesores left on the outside of this truck. So first and foremost, let's get this jacked up, pull the tires off and take a look at the brakes. Oh, wow. All right, well, that didn't take very long. Found the problem. Look at this. So, oh my gosh, wow. Okay, so both of the 
both of the caliper locator pins have come out and are completely gone. Never seen that before. So my horrible brake crunching noise was the caliper itself grinding into the back of the wheel and the pad grinding a nice big groove into the uh, rotor there. So, that rotor might be okay. Actually, most of it seems pretty good. So, it seems like I might be able to get away with a set of calipers and pads to fix that problem. But, that's definitely what's been making that noise. So just for reference, here's the driver's side. This is what it should look like. No big groove here in the edge of the rotor. Pad sitting upright, sitting off of the rotor, not touching. And both of the pins are still here. Although that bottom one seems like it's backing out, so. Huh. But anyway, that's what it should look like. All right, well. Okay, come here, come back, come back, come here. So as a temporary solution, I have some old pins. These are what goes here, well, this way rather. And this is what has apparently fallen out as I was driving down the road, both of them. So I'm gonna stick these back in now temporarily until I can get a new set of calipers, a new set of pins, and a new set of rotors ordered for this. I don't know if you could see how much that moved there when I pried that back out. That caliper should not move around like that. tools. Nope, not in there. No. Come on. Damn it. That's it. Yes. Still don't understand how these things fell out of here. All right, well that should temporarily hold everything back in place for now. Let's see. Pin, pin. It's kind of how it's supposed to look, so that's improvement. And then while I'm in here, it's gonna be a good time to go ahead and blast some penetrating fluid down here on some of these connections. I think when I replace the calipers, I'm going to go ahead and replace these rubber lines here as well because don't know how old they are. More than likely they're original, which means they are coming up on 30 years old. Oh yeah. And here's something else that I found in here. The CV boot, which I have replaced before, has split again and is spraying axle. Ah, there's a piece of it right there. So that has spewed axle grease all over the place. So it's a mess back here. So really need to fix that. Actually, that one's torn too. So might be time to just order a whole new axle shaft. All right, brake parts ordered. Time to take the roof rack off. Well, I don't know if you can tell, but six months have gone by since that last shot. 
probably doesn't show up in video very well, but the blazer is infinitely dirtier. And not once in these six months has it had a proper wash. When I left off, as you just saw, I was working on taking the roof rack off, which I stopped short of completely removing. So that's partially taken off there. Half the screws are in it, half aren't. But I got busy using the blazer here to actually do some work. There we go. So to show you, it's full of crap here. Just finished up flipping a real estate property and I've been using this to haul all of my tools and materials back and forth from that property to my house. So the first step to get back going here on the blazer is to work on cleaning all of this out. So I'll show you that. I got everything fully cleaned out here. Unfortunately, I didn't get very good camera angles for the time lapse there, so sorry about that. But this is the cleanest the blazer's been in, I don't know, probably like two years. <laughs> Now that I've got everything cleaned out here, I'm going to move on to working on a couple other things. First up is the super cheap radio that I put in here a few years ago. Unfortunately, the volume knob or something goes totally crazy at random. And unfortunately, because of that, I think I have blown the front right speaker over there. So first up, I'm going to go ahead and change the head unit out. Um, since this has worked pretty well for a couple of years, I went ahead and bought another super cheap one that had relatively good reviews on Amazon. Um, it looks a little different than this. So first step is going to be to remove the old one. Well, I wasn't going to bother showing you too much of the install here because it's been done a million times before and that's probably not why you're watching this video. But uh, just uh, something that came up here is I got the old one out. So here's the new one. I've already installed it in the adapter piece. Looks a little different than the old one, but is of similar quality and similar make. And I guess good and bad. One way you can definitely tell is the adapters or the um, wiring pigtails that came with the new one actually match up with what the old ones are. So. <laughs> That actually saves me a whole bunch of time. I don't have to rewire anything from what I did before. I just need to plug this in to the new head unit and it should work. So fingers crossed. All right, well, it's in there. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Helps if you hit the power button. All right, well, it seems like it works. I'll have to put some, I'll have to listen to some music here and see if that speaker sounds any better or uh, find out if it was blown or if it was the channel on the old head unit. So um, I will do that with some uh, copyrighted music that you guys won't get to hear, but 
I'll let you know how that goes. All right, well, here's the new one fully installed. Everything works, and it seems like I lucked out, and it was actually the front right channel on the old head unit that was blown and not the speaker. So next up, I need to get back to working on the brakes. I did order a whole bunch of parts six months ago when I first started this video. Honestly, I don't even remember what I ordered now, so I need to go back and open those boxes and see what I got. All right, now that the new radio is in, it's time to get back to fixing some of the other problems. And at this point, I can't even remember what I ordered when I started this video. So I'm gonna tear open some of these boxes and see what parts I've got to work with. Okay. This one, I know what it is, I think. <clears throat> yep. Nothing too special there, just some basic maintenance. New set of wiper blades for the front. Let's check this one out. All right, that's new adhesive for the rear view mirror, which has fallen off for, I don't know, like the sixth time now. So need to glue that back up. And here's the big one. Don't really know which one of these is the top, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's the Rock Auto order that I put in, I don't know, six months ago, something like that when I started this video. There should be some brake parts in here. All right, yep, okay. So I did order all new brake lines too, apparently. So brake line for the front left, front right, and then the center section in the rear. So those are good. Got some new semi-metallic brake pads for the front. What's this? Internet. Oh, I think that might be for one of the other cars. I think that's for the Honda. Oil filter. Put that out of the way. Rock Auto. New sticker, Sob Sonnet. Add that to the collection. Oh, I was mistaken. Not a Sonnet. It's a Bricklin. All right, what else? Let's see, we've got set of calipers for the front of the blazer all new calipers all new hoses what's this oh yeah i ordered a couple little ac parts too uh, we'll get to that at some point in the future because it is uh end of november here in florida right now so still use the ac sometimes but not that big of a deal at the moment so it's a new expansion tube Right, orifice, expansion tube, something like that, whatever it's called, and set of gaskets. So we'll set that aside for playing with in the future. And then the last thing that's in here is a new hernia. No, just kidding. New front axle. As I showed in the video there, the front left axle on the blazer, both of the boots are leaking and spraying grease everywhere. And rather than getting a couple of boot kits, I decided to just replace the whole axle. So that will go in when the brakes come off. So I'm going to do the easy job first and glue the rear view mirror back on. Oh, <laughs> one other thing I just noticed here as I was organizing these parts didn't order the one thing that I really needed, the rest of the brake parts, I didn't necessarily need to fix the problem. I forgot to order a new set of brake caliper pins, so I need to get a set for both sides as well. So something else to fix as usual. All right, now the mirror and the wiper blades. Go press stop recording. All right, I'll fix this for the hundred millionth time. So I 
usually always do this now and it keeps falling off so but it does fall off much faster if you don't so the old adhesive is still up here if you are doing this yourself make sure you scrape it off really well once it's scraped off make sure you clean it really well otherwise the new stuff will stick for like five seconds and just fall right back off much better when it sticks for like, you know, five months and then falls back off and then you get to do it again, like this. And yes, I did this tint myself. It's a little janky up here, don't judge me. That's all the old stuff's off. Now I'll just wipe it down with uh, Windex real quick and let that dry before I get started with the glue. GoPro, stop recording. Oh, and don't forget to clean the button off really well too. You can see there's still residue there. And just in case you don't know what I'm talking about here, the button is the little piece that slides into the back of the mirror. So if you're doing this, take the button out, clean it, and then when we go to glue it, we will glue just the button itself and not the mirror. Otherwise, it will immediately fall off and you're back to square one. All right. Windshield's clean and dry. Button is clean and dry. And for good measure, I also like to take this and just run it across a piece of sandpaper too and score it up a little bit, give you your best shot possible. Another quick tip on something that I have learned the hard way once or twice is make sure you glue this thing on there the right way. So in this case the skinny part goes up and then the tapered part goes in so it's pretty obvious which side is clean and shiny but just make sure you get the right side pointed up or once again you have to go back to the beginning and start all over. So. Also, read the instructions helps. I don't always say that, but I've gotten this one wrong a couple of times, and if you don't get the activator just right, once again, it will either immediately fall off or fall off within a couple of days. So apply the activator to both the windshield and the button. I think that's what I've done wrong like every time. I've only put it on one surface. Maybe it'll stay up there for like a couple of years this time. We'll see. Aha, here, here's another thing. This is why we're reading the directions for once. Allow the activator to dry for five minutes. So, something else I don't think I have fully done. Maybe I did, I don't remember. It's, like I said, it's been, I don't know, a year since I did this the last time. I think that's good, so. I'll come back in five minutes and put the adhesive on. Okay. Well, it's been like uh, seven or eight minutes now, so we should be good. Time to do the adhesive. So the instructions say one drop to the middle of the button, and that's it. Again, double check, make sure I put this up there the right way. Okay, here we go. Alright, well I think that's good. So it doesn't look like it's perfectly perfectly straight on there but that doesn't really matter as long as it slides over you can adjust a little bit with the mirror and you'll never notice it so it says to let that sit and cure for 15 minutes i'm going to go ahead and let it sit for at least an hour before i try to hang the mirror back up all right wiper blades not very exciting but you know kind of nice to have when it rains don't think I've replaced these since I first bought this thing. So I put these on new right after I bought it and that's been five and a half years and I don't think I've changed them so not too bad. Oh it has a blemish on the black paint. Fail. Yep, I'm going to be that, I know, I'm going to go get the spray paint and fix that. Alright, well, not perfect, but a quick hit of black satin paint and it looks a little better. Might seem silly, but, you know, I try to take care of these things. 
Nothing wrong with having an old car, but it looks a lot nicer when it looks nice. All right, well this side's better. No big chip. All right, done, simple. All right, well that's gonna wrap it up for part one of this video. I apologize, it did turn into just a bunch of little maintenance items that drug out into a longer video. But that's the case with older cars. Sometimes there's a bunch of stuff that you have to fix when you haven't worked on them very much for a couple of years. So make sure you check back in a few weeks for part two of this video where I continue on fixing the blazer and making a few improvements. And eventually, sometime in part two, I will get around to doing what I set out to do at the beginning of part one and swap out the brakes and get the roof rack done on the blazer, along with a few other things. So again, make sure you check back for that. Thank you very much if you watched all the way to the end here. Make sure you like this video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave me a comment down below if you've got something to add. All of that really helps the channel. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in two weeks.